What's worse, an emotional affair or a physical affair? And is one more forgivable than the other? On today's case, Ms. Richards says absolutely not. There is no acceptable form of cheating. And she says her fiance's constant lies and seemingly endless indiscretions have steadily eroded her love for him. Mr. Howard says he loves Ms. Richards. And while he admits that he's made some mistakes in the past, he's mostly just the victim of a series of misunderstandings. Mr. Howard says the last thing he wants is to lose Ms. Richards and their engagement. Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Richards versus Howard. Thank you. Ms. Richards and Mr. Howard. Ms. Richards, you are here today because you say you are done with this relationship. You claim your fiance, Mr. Howard, is a disrespectful serial cheater who only cares about himself. Now you feel trapped because you say he convinced you to put your life savings into a home for the two of you. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Howard, you say you love Ms. Richards and want to save this relationship. You say Ms. Richards is overreacting and holding your past against you. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let's see how we got here. Why are we here today, Ms. Richards? Uh, because he's a liar, he's a cheater, he's disrespectful. I don't think he's ready for marriage at all, and I'm fed up with it. I'm done. Ms. Richards says she's done. Mr. Howard, what do you say? Well, Your Honor, I love her, I care about her, I want to marry her, and she is holding the past against me. She just is paranoid. So th there's got to be a little bit more to this than um, Mr. Howard saying you're just paranoid. Why don't you give me an example of why you say he's a liar and a cheater, Ms. Ms. Richards? On my birthday, he, like, went MIA. We were supposed to be house hunting, and he was, said he was gonna go to his parents' house, and then he was supposed to meet up with me later at the bar for my birthday, and he did not. He didn't so he left you alone on your birthday? Yes, he did. He actually went MIA. I tried calling him several times. He wouldn't answer. Uh, later, when he came home, I confronted him about it. I asked him, where have you been? What have you been doing? Like, you said you were here, but you weren't. And he denied everything. He was like, no, I was just sleeping. So I found his phone, went through it later that night, and he had been messaging other women, telling them to meet him at this bar instead of the bar he was supposed to be at with me. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you, Mr. Howard, you better have a good explanation for this one. I was actually hanging out with my little brother, helping him find a new girlfriend, and we ended up going to a bar with my little brother, and she overreacts. Ooh! You don't have any idea. You are looking at the birthday queen. I just turned 60. I did, like, a whole month of celebrations. And so, when the lady says that you had an expectation to be there for her birthday, how do you not show up on her birthday? There are several times that she never showed up for mine, and... I was always there for your birthday. Okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mr. Howard. The excuse that you just gave me was you went to do something with your little brother. He needed a new girlfriend. But you didn't think I need to protect my relationship with my girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, and, and then there was also another example of why he's a liar and a cheater. Dag. More? Yes, there's definitely more. Okay. Um, so I was at work, and he was supposed to be going over to one of his friend's house. And it was supposed to just be, like, the guys. It was a boys' night and whatnot. Um, I asked and you didn't him... have a problem with that? No, I okay. didn't. I asked him if there was going to be any females there at all, just from things in the past, and he said no, that there wouldn't be. But I just had an intuition, so I took a friend with me, and we went over there, and we watched for about an hour. Um, a woman did come over, and... He opened the door and gave her a giant hug, and they went inside for about 20 minutes. And then after about 20 minutes, they came outside, sat on the porch, like they were way more than friends. You don't give your friend hugs? Like, well, no, like Howard, that. I'd like to just get to why you didn't tell your fiance that there were going to be girls there. I didn't expect them to show up. Oh, you didn't expect this young lady to show up? Yeah but it was all guys, and she's always thinking that I'm cheating. It's always, I'm always cheating. 
Do you have, however, any evidence of actual cheating? Not instinct, actual cheating. Yes. Okay, so I actually brought a picture with me to the courts. Um, he went to work and I found his old phone. Uh, I went through it. Um, he had one of his old Reddit accounts logged in still and one of the posts on the picture was this picture and it is of a girl's privates and like his hand on top of her. That's an old picture. That's what he tried to say that day. That it was an old picture, but the tattoo in the picture is a brand new tattoo since we've been together. Ooh. I but never the, cheated on her though. That my bad. Sir. <laughs> is your hand on a woman's private parts in this picture? Yes. How is those cheated? private parts your woman's private part? No. Ouch. What? <laughs> I mean, seriously, you seriously expect a woman to not believe that you're cheating when your actual hand is on a one, another woman's <laughs> What in the world? Yeah, he really expected me to buy that. Give me your explanation. It's just an old picture. And she always thinks that I'm cheating when I'm also reading a book. Like, I like... No, 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 you're not reading a book here unless it's Braille. Huh? <laughs> Holla. Because I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. If you're telling me that this was a new tattoo, are you... Did we Photoshop an old picture? You got to come up with a better explanation. Or understand. you can legitimately just look at me in I the face and say... I don't have a good reason for, the, for that. Well, no, but how is it an old picture if... The tattoo on your hand was brand new since we were together. That tattoo was a less than a month old. That makes no sense. I don't know. That's called you lying and you got caught in a lie. So we can move to the next subject. Yeah. There yeah. you go. I ended up getting pregnant and then I started to miscarry. Oh, I'm so sorry. And when I called him, he told me I was overreacting. You always overreact it was not, to it. I don't care. What? She was miscarrying. Miscarrying your baby. She's always dramatic about everything. And never, you never can believe what she says. She's so you dramatic. didn't believe that she was ha having no. a miscarriage? No. Clearly, you have proven your case on the fact that he's a liar and a cheater. I understand you also find him to be very disrespectful. Yes. Um, a way that he's disrespectful is, so we've made this rule that he can't have any female co like any females, not just coworkers, uh, in like his car, and I can't have any male coworkers or males you know. in your car. Yes, males in general in my car. So you all made this as a mutual rule. Yes, we came up with it together because there had been some other like little bickers about it, and. But it came up because. When I was working, it was cold outside, and nobody wants to sit out in the cold when they're smoking a cigarette, and she thought it was a big deal, but we're just sitting in the car. got 15 minutes to smoke Okay, but when I called you, and you, when I asked you who was in the car with you, instead of explaining that, you proceeded to hang up on me, and then when I called you back, refused to answer your phone. Because I had to go into work. That's a very reasonable explanation. Why didn't you just say to your fiancé, babe, it's Susie, or whatever her name is, right. from work. Because you're hiding something. You wouldn't like it. In general, just having another female in the car. Nothing was going to happen. I just didn't... She asked a question to sit in the car and stay warm, and I said, that's fine. And Absolutely. I didn't think about the outcome in it. Like, I, no, but you, I'm not even asking. There's no judgment there. I actually think that was a very I nice mean, gentleman thing to do. I mean, but it, why didn't you tell her what was going on? Because she would overreact. She always does. I know, but Mr. Howard, I'm, I'm going and back that's, to you. That's, that's the girl that I brought on today is my witness. Uh, Robert, we have the actual co-worker, Ms. Kayla Boone. Okay. Let's see if uh, she'll join us. And I'm also scared of Brandy. Like, you never know what... How are you scared of me? Wait one Your second. Your reaction. Hi. Hi. State your name for me. Kayla Bone. Miss Bone, I am so glad to have you here. What kind of relationship do you have with Mr. Howard? Um, I met Annie just a couple months ago at work. He's just a friend. Um, okay. He was one of the first people to talk to me at work. He's really friendly. So it's a coworker. Yes. <laughs> so do you and Mr. Howard have 
any kind of romantic relationship. We're just strictly friends. Okay. And now I'm I've been here at this bench a minute. So is it friends with benefits or is it just friends? Girl, it's just friends. Okay, see, I like that. Okay. Look me right in the eye. Us to us, we know the difference, right? Yes. <laughs> Got it. Cool in the gang. So what happened during this lunch break? He offered to let me sit in his car and make my phone calls because it was raining and I didn't want to walk all the way to my car. He didn't even come in the car with me. I literally just sat in this car by myself. But apparently that was some big deal and she was really upset and it became a problem. To be honest with you, this whole car thing is kind of silly. A little bit. I mean, the whole thing is kind of silly and the reason it's kind of silly is because that's a very reasonable thing. Let somebody sit in the car, whether you in it, <clears throat> not in it. But if that's y'all agreement, I just right. want to know why you just didn't tell her. I was scared of her reaction. But we had a... A rule. So right. why didn't you follow the rule? Because you broke the rule th when you took your coworker that but was. But see, I told you about that. I didn't lie to you. I did not hang up on you. I didn't avoid it. I told you, Miss Boone. Bless your heart, but you don't need to be up in this mess. I do not, Your Honor. So I want you to go with God. Okay. Thank you very much. Because the last thing she needs is to be brought in too silly. Okay. And this is sounding more and more, more and more silly. So I come home and his car is parked up the hill at, in her driveway. And I knock on the door for probably 10 minutes. You actually rolled up at another woman's house and got your man from her bed and told him it's time to come home. It wasn't home. in well, her bed. Where yeah. were you, sir? I was sleeping on the floor. In her bedroom. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. I mean, Mr. Howard, why, you, it seems like you choose a lie when the truth is a much easier course of action, sir. Yes, yeah, sure. So you're gonna have to explain to me why you do that. I don't know. Choice of habit. So that that really kind of makes you a habitual liar, and it's very difficult for anybody to want to trust you. And I certainly don't want a habitual liar as a boyfriend. If I don't want you as a boyfriend, I don't want you as a fiance, because you're not gonna make a good husband. Correct. So help me to understand. What's going on with this lying? Why do you feel the need to lie? And to lie about little things that don't even matter. I also have another, like, oh, way Lord. he's disrespectful Go and ahead, a liar and stuff. Um, so I was taking care of my grandmother, who was sick with cancer. Oh, I... bless her heart. She has since passed. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, so I was at... Staying with her, she needed 24-hour mm -hmm. care at this point. So I come home because I came home twice a week to change, like, my co clothes and stuff out. Absolutely. So I come home, and his car is parked up the hill at, in her driveway because she moved closer, I feel, to him, to be close to him. This, this random lady? Yes. That was apparently just a co-worker, he says. Um, you, be, you have a lot of friendly co-workers, sir. Right? So I come home and his car is parked up at her house. So I go up to her house and I knock on the door for probably 10 minutes. I'm assuming I had to wake him up because when he came to the door, he looked like he just rolled out of bed. Um, Wait, you went to another woman's house to get your man? Yeah, I told him he needed to come oh, home and we needed I to just talk. Got that. <laughs> I just got that. And that we needed to figure out what was happening because no, like this was not okay. It was disrespectful. The list goes on. I'll Disrespectful is the least of the words that I would use. You actually rolled up at another woman's house and got your man from her bed and told him it's time to come home. It wasn't home. in well, her bed. Where yeah, were you, yeah. sir? I was sleeping on the floor. You, but you have a house down the block. In her bedroom. Oh, that's sort of like your hand wasn't on that woman's in the other picture. Oh, okay. Right? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Really, my final straw with all of it is the miscarriage that I had that he was not around for. Whoa. Yes. So we've talked a lot about having children and whatnot. So we started the process because I have fertility problems. Well, I ended up through medication getting pregnant uh, for two and a half months. 
things were fairly okay. And then I started to miscarry. Oh, I'm so sorry. And he was not home. And when I called him to try and tell him what was going on and to get him to come home, he wouldn't. He told me I was overreacting. Um, you always overreact it was not, to it. She was, she was miscarrying. But I cried to you on the phone in how much pain I was. But she was miscarrying, no matter if it was non-traumatic, if it was she went into the restroom and discovered it. I don't care what, she was miscarrying. And she called you. And why didn't you miscarry your baby? Because she's always dramatic about everything. And never, you never can believe what she says, because she's So you dramatic. didn't believe that she was ha having no. a miscarriage? No. Wow. So why didn't you just take me to the doctor and they could have told you that? Because I thought you were just dramatic about it. Wow. Like... Yeah. So, do you want this relationship? Because I'm looking you in the face now. No. But we have no. a house together. Okay, that sounds like a business arrangement. And to be honest with you, what you can do is sell that house. Yeah. So I'm looking at the facts of this case. Ms. Richards, you came in here today because you say that the engagement, you want the engagement off. Yes. Due to Mr. Howard being a serial cheater, a liar, and being very disrespectful. I think you've proven your case. Mr. Howard, you said you were in here to save your relationship, but quite frankly, you haven't put forth any evidence of a man that can be depend on, that a man who can be trusted. You lied to me sitting here with a photograph of your hand on another woman's private parts. I mean, you couldn't even come up with a viable explanation. Not that there would ever exist one. How about, Your Honor, I screwed up. I promise her I'm not going to lie. You didn't do any of that. And so as, I, as I'm going through the list, do I advise this couple to stay together? Do I tell this couple um, to break up? I don't like to tell people to break up. I like you to come to the conclusion on your own. But you've not been respectful to this woman. You have not treated her with dignity. You have treated her like she doesn't matter. Right. And, Miss Richards, you are 28 years old. Yes. You have a whole lot of life in front of you, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. <laughs> and you said that you want to have a family? Yes. You're not going to have it not the way you want with Mr. Howard. You know that, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it may be a tough truth, you may not like to hear it, because it might hurt your feelings. But sometimes it's better to just cut your losses. Right. Put the house on the market, take out what you individually put in for the down payment, and split the proceeds. That's what you do when a business relationship concludes, because there is no romance here. Nothing? Nothing after that? No. No? Okay. No. All right. Good, because I didn't want to hear it anyway. I'm so glad she proved her case. This man's a lying cheat. You know what? After so many cases that we've heard so far, this is the most one-sided case I've ever experienced. And he's sitting there, I don't even know how you can Oof. look me back in the face when there is a photograph mm -hmm. of you with a recent tattoo <laughs> on a recent vagina that does not belong to your fiance. Well, maybe he was a doctor. I don't know. Is he a gynecologist or something? See, that sounds much better than the story he came up with. <laughs> <laughs>